Hello friends, subscribers, and uh, anyone who's picking this up, welcome back to the Daniel Rosal podcast after what? It's only been probably a few years of a hiatus. This podcast is kind of in a permanent state of neglect because uh, I've been focusing on operating a YouTube channel for the past number of years. Before that, I was doing writing. I mean, I love creativity and I love all these creative outlets, but uh, I've kind of focused on video and have been sticking really with that. Uh, but I did think for old time's sake, and as I'm currently nice and uh, tucked away in my uh, pajamas on a cold wintry night, that it would be fun to do a podcast because not everyone has a uh, YouTube premium subscription, which I have to just kind of give a quick recommendation for. I don't make any money by recommending this, even though I do make money from being a YouTube creator. But I think YouTube premium is just such a good investment uh you know if you're watching youtube for hours per day and i'm probably in that category you can get a background play without having to you know install workarounds and hacks and all this kind of stuff it just works um and you don't get ads so it makes the process of watching youtube vastly more enjoyable and i think it's really good value for money um i barely watch netflix i just pretty much watch youtube and uh i keep that subscription going. Anyway, I wanted to talk today about the Ireland-Israel stuff. Uh, I think I'll, I'll call this podcast maybe Why is Ireland so anti-Israel? To try perhaps a little bit shamelessly uh, ride on the back of all that uh, chatter that's been going on. There have been articles written, there have been YouTube videos, and everyone's got their ideas. Um, and uh, the, the reason I think uh, my voice might be useful is that I'm an Irish Jew and there, as I've remarked previously, really aren't that many of us in the world in the first place. And in the second place, uh, a lot of those uh, Irish Jews who are out there just kind of like to keep their head down and, uh, you know, not make too much of a fuss or a noise. And I totally understand the rationale for doing that. Um, knowing how how vitriolic the Irish left gets uh, when their views and their echo chambers are broken into by us nasty Zionists and pro-Israel people. So uh, regarding Ireland being anti-Israel, so I've had this kind of same back and forth a few times now on my YouTube comment section and uh, people are like, hey, you can't call Ireland anti-Israel. Uh, I'm, I'm Irish and I stand with Israel. And, uh, you know, there definitely are people like that. There is a pro-Israel community in Ireland. Um, I know that, firstly, because I'm interacting with those people at the moment on Twitter, um, X, and also because back in the day, I founded a pro-Israel organization called Irish for Israel. Um, a very nice guy called Barry Williams then took that over. Uh, and now there is a separate group called the Ireland-Israel Alliance run by a lady called Jackie, and who's doing really tremendous work. I was going to add, say, thankless work. I can imagine it's really, really tough. Um, just mentally getting involved in all that stuff, I find, is a real... Um, it's not good for your mental health, this world of Israel advocacy. I, I hate to say that, but it's my it's my belief. I, need to fi I find myself needing to periodically just step back from it because... Um, it's just too much dealing with all the toxicity out there on the net. And I think for you know people who care about their mental health, and everyone should care about their mental health, if you're doing Israel advocacy, please just keep that in mind. And you know take breaks if you need to take breaks, step away from it because um, you know it's uh, if you ha if if you have a nervous breakdown on the back of being exposed to so much hatred, uh, the other side has won. Uh, so don't give them that. Don't give them that victory. Uh, take a take a Hasbara retreat if you need to. Um, so you know, th so there is a pro-Israel uh, community in Ireland. But I still, when I say Ireland is anti-Israel, what I usually mean is the government. I don't mean like necessarily the sum of the people. But I'm talking about stuff like Ireland being kind of the first country in the EU to call unconditionally for a ceasefire uh, while the EU was backing it. The uh, Prime Minister of Ireland saying uh, a week ago that you know Israel is approaching conducting revenge and other government ministers said it's conducting a war on children and these these are the Fianna Gael politicians who are considered like the more pro-Israel part of the parliament and even they're pretty damn anti um so I you know I struggle to really see any way fair way other to categorize Ireland's approach to Israel other than very very antithetical and then you have of course the uh, delightful Richard Boyd Barrett RBB uh, who is the kind of pin-up Israel hater. And I think that that guy is a flat-out anti-Semite because he's just cross... He's compared 
Israel to the na- Nazis, and as I say in my videos, I support the IHRA uh, working definition of anti-Semitism. And one of its uh, instances of anti-Semitism is that comparing Israel to the Nazis is a manifestation of anti-Semitism. So it's not anti-Semitism, is not a charge I level about easily or quickly or flippantly. I wouldn't say that about Leo Varadkar for sure. I wouldn't say that about Michal Martin um, in the Irish government, but I would say that about Richard Boyd Barrett uh, because not just sort of the, because of that sort of uh, very cut and dry definition, but just because of the manic, ferocious hatred he has for Israel and the continuous lies he says about war crimes, ethnic cleansing, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just kind of, he hates Israel with a fiery passion that is all consuming and it's kind of scary. It's a little bit scary to watch. Someone said on Twitter the last day, I think it was um, a lady called Teresa, who's a pro Israel advocate in Ireland. She said, Is it just me or does he sound crazy? I'm like, It's not just you. Uh, I'm surprised you're asking that. He sounds absolutely insane. And um, it, it really is reminiscent of, uh, we don't like to say his name, certain German leader. Um, who was at the helm of Nazism, and it just the, fr- the it's just the body language, and the uh, you know and the vocal language. It just is uh, it, as a Jewish person, it gives me kind of um, makes me scared, and that's why speaking of Richard Boyd Barrett, I know it probably seems to people like you know this guy is just a people before profit fringe guy, right? They they have like two seats in Dol Air, and and you know he's just a nut job and whatever, but. Um, he people like him, I think, are very dangerous. Right now, he might say you might say he's a small following, but he's very quickly and very aggressively radicalizing and canvassing a following on the kind of disaffected margins of Irish society with his populism. And this is where you know words leads words lead to actions. And someone like Richard Boyd Barrett is the perfect example of an ideologue who can inspire uh, physical manifestations of anti-Semitism. So that's why I've been documenting his hate rhetoric online, even though, trust me, um, I do have better things to do than listening to his bloody odious rants about Israel and putting them up on YouTube. But I think that someone has to do it. And uh, as a professional video editor, I'm just kind of well positioned to be able to do that. So I've been doing that. Um, But why is Ireland so anti-Israel? So I would say that there's a few things uh, that are out there. The first is this false parallel to British colonialism that people draw. And it's so, so entrenched in Irish society that people just reflexively say, if you ask them, why do you support Palestine? They'll say, the British did this to us and Israel is doing that to the Palestinians. So if you kind of go deep into that, I think what is really there is ignorance. Um because I've you know I did a video about how Ireland Israel Israel Palestine is not British Ireland it's not the same thing um, at all and the reason for that is because the Jewish people have been in the land of Israel that's where Judaism started there was a Jewish temple the Jewish people were exiled and uh, then now the Jewish people are returning um, and that is called Zionism. And there have been studies where, you know, the DNA of Jews, including folks like me, we all look kind of similar and Middle Eastern. And it's not like that for no reason. We are related distantly through the generations to this people. Now, that doesn't condone all of Israel's actions since 1948. There were people in the land um, since after the Jews were kicked out by the Romans. You know, there were people there. Although Jews always have lived in Israel, that's something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, There's always been a continuous Jewish presence in the land of Israel. At times very small, but there's always been one. So we, we, the Jews, are indigenous to Israel and we were coming back. And it's not the same at all as the British just, uh, you you know, uh, using Ireland as a colony and brutalizing the Irish. It's just not a comparable set of historical circumstances because the British were not and never were uh, native to Ireland. So the narrative is as cast in Ireland that there were these native Palestinian people and there was no Palestinian state ever, basically, including now, I would argue. Um, so, you know, it's basically based on falsehoods. That's uh, this false idea uh, that the Jews sort of dispossessed this ancient, this non-existent civilization 
Uh, so again, I'm not saying that Israel doesn't what it's been do, what what it's been doing in the West Bank is 100 percent right. I may not agree with it, but I think the Irish parallel to colonialism is a load of crap. It's false, and I think people either um, don't really understand Jewish history because the only way you can really make it make that argument is to just dismiss all of Jewish history. So they either are ignorant of that, or they're being willfully ignorant. So that's the kind of colonialism and the underdog thing. And something very interesting that uh, Jackie from the Irish Israel Alliance said in a video is that there was actually this kind of switch in the 1930s. The um, There was a time when Ireland supported Israel. It's so wacky for uh, people of my vintage, born in 1989, to think I've only ever known Ireland to be so hostile to Israel. And that was not why I moved to Israel. I moved to Israel because I wanted to live in Israel and because they believe in Zionism, but it was a big factor in making Ireland uncomfortable for me as a Jewish person, the extent of the hostility. So that's all I've ever personally known. I was never alive when Ireland was pro-Israel, but I trust that that was the case in the 1930s. And it was just this basically underdog thing that the Jews were viewed as the underdogs. So the Irish liked the underdogs because they see themselves as the underdogs and downtrodden and whatever. And uh, then in 1948, Israel sort of became the overdogs, if you will. And so that's another kind of explanation. And uh, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I don't think, I think we sort of in the, in the scheme of global history, we have become a power, but we sort of are still in a sense underdogs, even though we have a big military, I'm talking about in on the global sphere, but um, I don't, that's kind of a strange uh reason to support or not support someone i would if there was another conflict i was looking at i would think of who's in the right and who's in the wrong not necessarily who's the underdog and the final um sort of contributor contributory factor i think to irish antipathy to israel is anti-semitism and uh, i grew up in a family and I, i hate to sort of badmouth my own family on uh, on a podcast this is not the intention here but uh, they they would agree to this i was sort of the person saying there is quite pervasive anti-semitism here in ireland and i was basing that based on my personal experience based on but based also on what i was seeing on the internet on places like the journal.ie before they deleted their talkback section uh, i saw a lot of very anti-semitic comments on news articles related to israel um, as well as politics.ie uh, and uh, just Twitter. Uh, way back before I, w- I was in Twitter myself, I was monitoring Twitter. And so I've been saying this for years. My family been kind of saying, don't be so extreme. It's not really like that. They just uh, don't understand or they just support the Palestinians. And I said, no, there's quite a strong current of anti-Semitism here. And yes, it could be on the fringes of society. But I'm talking now, now that you have people like Richard Boyd Barrett um, who are, uh, I think, openly anti-Semitic, uh, denying the Jewish connection to Israel, comparing Israel to the Nazis, you see that there at least is anti-Semitism. That's kind of opened people's eyes. And the Irish have this strange, so, uh, not not all of the Irish, of course, but um, a lot of Irish people have this strange insistence on claiming that there is no anti-Semitism in Ireland. And firstly, it's wrong. There absolutely is. But secondly, of course there is, because there is anti-Irish sentiment in Israel uh, to some extent, and there's anti-Jamaican sentiment in Denmark, and so on and so forth. There is some level of hatred in all among all people. It's, an, it's just an unfortunate fact of the human condition. So when people categorically deny that there is a, any anti-Semitism, I think that's a very bizarre claim. Uh, there is there is a politician, called, a, a comedian, in big quote marks called Ty Kiki, who did a skit uh, recently denying that there was rape on October 7th, which is just an absolutely unbelievably, unbelievable scurrilous uh, claim. Uh, he made also a parody, basically sort of mocking Jews for making, uh, talking about the uh, the Holocaust too much. So look, there is anti-Semitism and uh, I don't know why people make that claim that there is none whatsoever because it's illogical but they I've been told that so many times and I've told those people so many times I am an Irish Jew I literally grew up in Ireland until I was 25 and I experienced quite a bit of anti-semitism so please 
do not contradict my lived experience and tell me that you know uh, every, every, all of this is imaginary because it's not uh, so yeah there is the, definitely that out there um, but uh, yeah, I think it's probably on the margins that's my hopeful feeling that most people a lot of people are neutral uh, some people are pro and they don't want to publicly identify as pro because doing so will attract the ire of the radical left in Ireland who are very nasty I received death threats and a lot of very, very uh, nasty messages since I've become vocal about this these things on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, so they're nasty people, uh, a lot of them. And, uh, you know, people don't want to bring that upon themselves. And I can kind of understand that as well. So that's really uh, what I sort of think is is there. Uh, you know, I do. I actually really don't see if you ask me, am I optimistic or pessimistic about Ireland and Israel? I would say I'm extraordinarily pessimistic. The reason for that is that, uh, according to the projections, Sinn Féin recently uh, uh, feted the Palestinian ambassador to, to Ireland at their Ardesh, who will not condemn the October 7th massacre. And they embraced this woman on stage and gave her a standing ovation. And this party is really just a fraction behind people before profit in terms of their hatred of Israel. And uh, they are very much, uh, um, they're, they're a much more... A serious uh, group because they're much bigger, um, they have much more seats in Parliament and the projections are that they may have a big win in the next election in Ireland and if the climate is currently so anti-Israel you can only imagine uh, you know, that these motions to expel the Israeli ambassador that are currently failing could succeed and um, I think that Ireland's, Ireland's politicians I think Ireland is standing on the wrong side of history it's going down a dark path um, of uh, at Israel's time of need of aligning itself with the Palestinian world, and uh, I would personally support. I uh, not uh, the the I I wouldn't say I'm not I'm not sure I would say I would support, but I wouldn't be saddened to put it like that to see the cessation of diplomatic relations if uh, Ireland were to kick out the Israeli ambassador and we had to break off ties as well. I wouldn't be too sad because it's just been a very one sided relationship uh, characterized by extreme hostility from Ireland who uh, strangely seems to still think it can be like a neutral mediator but a lot of that's based on them thinking that their experience in Northern Ireland is way more applicable than it actually is in reality. Uh, so that's uh, today's podcast. Uh, might be the f- first one, first and last one for quite a while uh, but uh, this will be on the various podcasting platforms like Spotify and what have you. And uh, if you do want to write in or encourage me to do more or just get in contact with me, uh, my email is uh, public at danielrosehill.com, two L's in Rosehill, and that address will uh, get to me and we can, uh, you, you know, chat or uh, give me an idea for something else to talk about on a podcast if this format still uh, resonates with people. Until next time, thank you for listening.